In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a one-step linear equation. And I know many of you guys can solve all these equations without writing things down, right? However, my point is to technically show you how to organize our work, because that's a secret to improve your math grade, especially for later on, when we have to solve like more complicated like the equations that involve more steps. We really have to know how to organize our steps and how to show our work correctly. So, with that being said, let's look at these questions. And you know, all these equations involve 5 and 20 by just different operations. Let's look at the first one. We have x minus 5 is equal to 20. To solve an equation, that means at the end, we have to know x is equal to what, right? And you see, the operation that we have right here is x minus 5. To solve an equation, we do the opposite operation. This is x minus 5. The opposite of subtracting is to add. So let's plus 5 here, so that this and that will be cancelled, right? And we do the same thing on the right-hand side. So we add 5 on both sides. And this is how I will show you guys the work. And then we get x by itself. This is equal to 20 plus 5. And we can just work that out, 25. This is it. Because x is 25, that's the answer. Next, we have x plus 5 is equal to 20. We are adding the 5 right here, so we have to subtract 5 here. This way, this and that will cancel. And then we do the same thing on the other side, subtract 5. Then, we have x by itself. This is equal to 20 minus 5 is 15. Okay, next, we have 5x is equal to 20. First, we have to know what does this mean. This means what? 5 times x. So what should we do? What's the opposite operation of multiplication? Is to divide, right? Therefore, I'm going to show you, I'm going to draw an underline like this to show we are going to divide. We are going to divide it by 5 so that this and that will be cancelled. And we do the same thing right here. Divide both sides by 5. And then we just have to work it out x will be by itself, and this is equal to 20 over 5. 20 divided by 5, we get 4. This is it. What's next? We have x over 5, and what does this mean? This means x divided by 5, so we should do what? We are going to multiply, right? Multiply both sides by 5. So let's do that. Put down the 5 here, and put a dot, like a solid dot. Multiplying. Do the same thing on the right hand side. 5 times 20. And you can put a 5 right here, like after the 20, it's fine too. 5 times 20, and 20 times 5 is the same thing, anyways, right? When we multiply 5 right here, this and that will cancel, and then we end up x by itself, and this is equal to 5 times 20 is what? 100. This is it. Next one, slightly trickier, because here we have 5 is equal to 20x. x is on the right hand side now, and we have 20 times x. So what should we do? Once again, we divide. Divide by what? The number in front of the x, because we have 20 times x. So we divide it by 20, and we do the same thing right here. Divide both sides by 20. This way, this and that will cancel. And we just have to work it out, right? This is x by itself. Even though it's on the right-hand side, we can still do it, right? We have to work out 5 over 20. What is the answer for that? We have to reduce fraction. The answer is a fraction. On the top, we divide it by 5, so we have 1. And then 5 goes into 20 four times. The answer is 1 over 4, OK? The answer is 1 over 4. And usually I don't want to write it down like this because I like to write it down as x is equal to 1 over 4. Just imagine this. Hi, what's your name? And I reply, Hi, my name is Mr. Chow. Or Mr. Chow is my name. And you see, the question right here is that we're trying to figure out what is the value of x. We should reply this as 
x is equal to 1 over 4 because that's how we read it, right? From left to right. I know it's not wrong to say 1 over 4 is equal to x, but this is just as weird as I would introduce you guys. Mr. Chow is my name. So it sounds just weird. I should have answered my name is Mr. Chow. Same thing here. So that's another reason why we should have x on the left hand side. Now let's look at the last one. We have 5 is equal to x over 20. x is right here, and x is divided by 20, so we should do what? We multiply. Multiply by 20 here, and you can put a 20 right here as well, up to you. I'll put down 20 in the front. So that this and that will cancel, and then we get x is equal to 20 times 5 is 100. But then, I would like to present the answer to you as x is equal to 100. So here I have four more examples, and I think this examples, even though they all require one step, but it's not likely for me to do them without showing work, right? Let's look at the first one. We have x minus 2 over 5, and that's equal to 3 over 5. We are subtracting. This is x minus 2 over 5. Therefore, we have to add. We add. 2 over 5 here, so that this and that will be cancelled. And we just have to do that on the right hand side. Also, and we will see x will be by itself, and this is equal to how do we add fractions? Well, the denominators are the same already, so we just add the top. 3 plus 2 is 5, so we have 5, and then over the same denominator, you keep it, right? And what's 5 over 5? It's just 1. So you reduce this, at the end you say x is equal to 1. That's it. Let's look at this one. 2 over 5x is equal to 40. What should we do? Well, we just have to identify what is happening right here. This right here is 2 over 5, a fraction multiplying with x. So we have to divide it by this fraction, right? We have to divide it by 2 over 5. But let me write this down for you guys. If I just put down divided by 2 over 5, yes, this and that will cancel. But then, when I put this down, divided by 2 over 5, this looks pretty intimidating because I have a little fraction here and I have a big fraction there. Not so good. So this is another way to look at it. Think about it. Whenever we divide by a fraction, it's the same as doing what? multiply by reciprocal. And this is how we can show work. 2 over 5 times x, let's multiply this by 5 over 2. We multiply by the reciprocal. And you see, you know this is right, because 5 and 5 can be cross-reduced, right? And then likewise, this 2 and 2 can be cross-reduced also. Therefore, you just end up with x by itself. But then, make sure you do the same thing on the right hand side. So on the left hand side we have the x by itself and this is equal to 5 over 2 times 40. And how do we do that? You can use a calculator if you have a calculator in hand. <laughs> but then this is how you do it. A uh, few ways. You can do 5 times 40 which is 200 and then divide it by 2 times 1 which is just 2, right? So this is just 200 over 2 is 100. Another way is you cross reduce first. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 40 20 times. And then you multiply. 5 times 20 is 100, top times top, right? And then over 1 times 1, which is over 1. Doesn't matter. x is equal to 100. That's it. And earlier, the 5 and 5 cancel, it's just a 1 and 1. That's how we get a 1. This one, 2x is equal to 3 over 4. And you see, this right here is 2 times x. You can put down over 2, but then we have a fraction already. If you put down over 2 like this, again, it doesn't look nice. It's intimidating. Use the same concept here. So 2 times x. Let me multiply this right here by 1 over 2, because that's the reciprocal of 2. 2 is like 2 over 1. So let me put this down as multiplying by 1 over 2. I know it's a slightly unusual way, like 
this is different than what I showed you earlier. But then it's just because we have a fraction on the right-hand side already. It will be easier if you think about it, and you can always do this as well. Multiply by the reciprocal right here, the number in front of the x, when you have 2 times x. We just need to multiply by 1 over 2. So we multiply by 1 over 2, and this 2 and that 2 will cancel, and we multiply by 1 over 2 like this, just like that. And we have x by itself, this is equal to, I cannot reduce anything, I just multiply top and top, 1 times 3 is 3, over 2 times 4 is 8, so 3 over 8, this is it. I cannot reduce the 2 and 4, okay, because they are both in the denominator, so keep that in mind. At the end, number 10, we have negative 2 plus x is equal to 3 over 4. What should we do? x is right here, and then here we have negative 2, so we have 2 add 2, plus 2 here, and then we also add a 2 here, this and that will cancel, and now we are done, because the x is by itself, but then we are not done, because we have to add the fractions and the whole number. Let's do this down below here, 3 over 4 plus 2, 2 is like what? 2 over 1. And we have to add the fractions. After we add it, we are done. You can also use a calculator if you have one in hand. How do we add fractions? Be sure you have the same denominator. This is 4, this is 1. If I multiply this by 4, then I can produce the same denominator, right? I have to do the same thing on the top, so multiply this by 4. And then you will see this is 3 over 4. And this is plus 2 times 8. I mean, 2 times 4 is 8. I went too fast. 2 times 4 is 8. And then on the bottom, we have 1 times 4, which is just 4. And at the end, we add the numbers up. On the top, 3 plus 8 is 11. You keep the same denominator, 11 over 4. That's the value for x. And in algebra, you can just leave your answer in the improper fraction. In fact, this is preferred. Don't use mixed number. Hopefully this video helps, and if you like it, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay. That's it.